สมเชยยังก็จบองจินุจิมเรศประกาศบรรทอกระจำนาการในเตวิธีสัมมนาการสดับสดิทลายการระบบดำนางบ่าดาวมาดังรับรับวินีโรเบิร์ตฮามิลไอมุนนังบุตรอองยิมเรสุมรุมลึกลูกโรเบิร์ตฮามิลสุมลูกนี่ยีไอบานยุดเชียงมุนนังบันเต็กดำไปตกลาตะเพียบดอลเนี่ยบ่ไพรพิซาอาจจะบ่ไพรพิซานังบานปิงลิงดำไปเอออองยมแรกเนี่ยจะรวมหนึ่งสาธารณชนหนึ่งอ๋อบานยุลบานดังกับปีเหตุพอลต่างหลายในตำแหน่งตำแหน่งปัญหาในการเมียนในจมูกจุกวิสนาในบองระบบโลกสมเชิงลูกมิตรวีอัลังเวนเนอร์ Thank you, Mr. President. It was my sloppiness. I forgot to mention to start with. That not only we have the birth certificate of Kerry Hamill and the copy of particulars of marriage of my clients, but we do as well have his own birth certificates. I already told you, your greffier, and um, all of that will be given to them in the proper form um, tomorrow. ลูกโรเบิร์ตฮามิลสมชื่อลูกฟอร์ดไอทลังกาเชียบันต่อ Mr. President thank you I may first begin by acknowledging my wife who was not in the session early and she has just come in during this session I've seen my love to my wife she has supported me through this enormously through the years and uh, I thank you for that I'd also like to ask in my nervousness early on I did not put up a photo of my brother Kerry Hamill I would ask the Mr. President to leave to put this photo up now for the court to see Thank you, Mr. President. As already described, Kerry used to write home about once a month. Some weeks passed without any communication from Kerry. The weeks turned to months, still with no contact from Kerry. As time went by, we became more and more concerned that something was wrong. Our family home was positioned at the mouth of the Fokatani River, which flows out into the Pacific Ocean. Towards the end of the year, my mother, Esther, would gaze out to sea and say, It's okay. He'll turn up at Christmas and surprise us. We all half expected the yacht to appear over the horizon at any moment. Mr. President, you like myself. 
will perhaps remember the times before we lived in a world of instant communication, the days before mobile phones, the internet, and 24-7 news. It was in this time of letters and telegrams, which younger generations cannot appreciate, that my family waited and waited for any news. There was a desperate sense of hope in our household. Christmas 1978 uh, came yeah. and went, as did the new year, and there was still no news. This was the first Christmas without the normal happiness. There was no excitement at New Year's. We were all thinking of the person missing from our lives. Kerry. As time went by, my parents became more and more anxious. Still, we hoped for a positive outcome. But deep down, we were all thinking the same thing. That something terrible had happened to my brother. My father, Miles Hamill, Hamill, wrote letters to the ports of Asia uh, and the New Zealand uh, government uh, requesting information about the Foxy Lady and any possible sightings. We were trying to establish if any shipwrecks had been reported uh, in the area. Nothing of any consequence was reported back to my father. We knew you were waiting to hear from a loved one. 16 months. 16 months. It was a very, very long time. Your Honours, one year and four months of uncertainty passes like an eternity in less than this period of time, a new life can be conceived and born. I was 14 when Kerry went missing, and 16 when we found out the terrible news. My two birthdays were a time of mute celebration, the waiting without knowing, the hoping while fearing the worst. It had been a terrible time for our family. I remember a day a neighbour rang us suggesting we go and get a copy of the local newspaper. I went with my second eldest brother, John Hammond, to the local news agent and I recall the look of sympathy on the attendant's face as he handed over the newspaper. On this day, 16 months after the capture of Kerry, we got the news that Kerry had been captured and tortured and murdered at the hands of the Pol Pot regime. My brother had been, My brother had been captured, tortured and killed. Mr President, nobody in the New Zealand government had the time to take to contact my parents with this terrible, uh, terrible news. We all had, all we had was the report staring out at the front of the newspaper. We were devastated. All that hope was now extinguished. I remember late that day standing in the kitchen, hugging my father, both of us crying for what seemed like a very long time. It was the closest I had ever felt to my father. I found it difficult to describe the feeling of love, complete love, combined with complete sorrow. I felt for my father at that moment. In some ways it was a beautiful moment that was all consumed in the grief and shock of the tragedy that had occurred. Never in our worst nightmares had we considered the reality of what had happened to Kerry. Death not by shipwreck, not by drowning or freak accident, 
death by torture. Death by torture. Not over a few seconds, or minutes, or hours, or days, or weeks even. Death by torture over a period of months. In the absence of Kiri's body, a memorial service was held. For the next 12 months, my parents tried to ascertain the detail of what happened and why the New Zealand government still supported Pol Pot's regime into the 1980s. At the same time, they tried to sustain their business, which was in decline and try and hold off bankruptcy. Mr. President, family life disintegrated. I would like to describe how my family struggled and perhaps failed to cope with my brother's death. With your leave, Mr. President, I would like to begin by telling you about my brother John. It is my conviction that what happened to John is directly linked to Kerry's death at, it, at S21. And as such, his story is an important part of the damage caused to my family. I would like to say John was a year younger than Kerry. The two brothers had a close bond. John was a wonderful, John, sensitive man that had the ability to make us all laugh to the point of tears. After Kerry went missing, that humour stopped. During the 16 month time lag between Kerry's capture and our discovery of what had happened, John displayed the effects of deep depression. Arguments I had had with them previously increased in number and intensity. These arguments often turned violent. John was 27. I was 16. The loss of his closest sibling had a massive impact on John. Eight months after he found out what had happened to my eldest brother, Kerry, my second eldest brother, John, took his own life. He threw himself off a cliff near our family home. My father, Miles, and my third brother, Peter, were the first to find John. They retraced his footsteps to the edge of the cliff and saw his body at the bottom of the rocks. On the, on the morning of John's funeral, I remember my mother administering pills to me and my older siblings, Sue and Peter. I later found out that these pills were Valium tablets. It was an example of how my parents didn't know, did not know how to deal with their grief. There was so little in the way of effective support systems that they somehow thought it was best to mask one's own feelings in the cloak of prescription medication. I discovered later that morning that my father had been in such a bad way during the night before the funeral that my mother had called for the doctor who administered strong sedatives. It was enough to render my father unconscious for the next 24 hours. He did not. He could not. Attend the funeral. 
Obviously, you can tell the sun is gone. It was simply too much for him. It was simply too much for him. It was simply too much for him. I feel he blamed himself for the death of his two eldest children. I think he felt he could have done more to protect them, as all parents do. As all parents do. Both Kerry George Hamill and John Dwyer Hamill died at the age of 27. I find it difficult to separate the death of John from the death of Kerry. I am certain that if Kerry's life had been spared, John would not be have taken his own life. Doik, when you killed my brother Kerry, you killed my brother John as well. The effect these two devastating losses had on our family simply cannot be measured. They were massive and incomprehensible. I often think how much better things might have been had my brother not been taken. It's impossible to say. My mother, Esther Hamill, was possibly the most deeply affected by Kerry's death. She was thinking about Kerry non-stop, but not communicating that to us. She was a very private woman, and in her own way, but she was a very outgoing lady as well, very humorous. She had a great sense of humor. But all that changed after Kerry was captured. I never saw her cry. She was so strong. But as a result of that strength and holding her pain within, she became very sick. Two years after we found out what happened to Kerry, and about 18 months after John's death, Mum, my mother, became bedridden with painful arthritis. She was in bed for many months. Her room was like a mausoleum. I can barely bring myself, sorry, I could barely bring myself to go into her room. I avoided her. So much so that it feels to me like I abandoned her right when she needed me most. It must have felt to her like she was, she had lost not only one, not two, but three sons. Such was my lack of support. I cannot forgive myself for that. It took years for her to get back her independence. But though she really let on, her back was a continuous source of pain. A few years later, she was afflicted with shingles, which is a disease of the nervous system. This illness took a long time for her to shake off. During those years, my mother was depressed, but she did not express it in a way that I consciously understood. She was angry. She fought with my dad, and she was very sad. My mother stopped engaging with life. She did less and saw less friends. She removed herself from all social interactions in the township. For her remaining children, however, she remained strong.
ហើយការធ្វើដំណើរនោះវាអាចធ្វើអរ៉ូវ and here was a third wanting to embark on a crazy challenge that may well kill them. She continued to support them. Every Christmas my mother would put on a brave face. But at some point on Christmas Day she would disappear to visit John's grave and lay flowers as a memorial to her two boys. My mother died 28th of July 2003 after succumbing to leukemia, cancer of the blood. She decided she died before seeing any measure of accountability for the death of her son. My father, Miles Hamilton, took the, kid, took the death of Kerry and John very bad. Over the years, it was relatively common to watch television and hear Dad in the kitchen doing mindless chores next door, quietly weeping. I knew at that point that he would have been crying for some considerable time before it progressed to being audible to where I sat in the room next door. At these times, Mum would stare at the television and try to block it out. To a certain extent, I did the same. I didn't offer Dad any sympathy or affection. For some reason, I just couldn't. The one moment of closeness that we had shared between us that day, we found out what had happened to Kerry had been all I could offer. He was a business owner in a partnership. It had been a successful, it had been a successful business. After Kerry's disappearance, murder, and John's death, my father lost the ability to function effectively at work. He couldn't make the difficult decisions anymore. And when hard financial times came along, he didn't respond the way he once might have. He was forced to retire too young. My father is now aged 88 and is suffering from the effects of Alzheimer's disease. He no longer recognises photos of my brother Kerry. I believe the pain of the last 30 years have taken a toll. I note on my, on both my parents' bravery through all of this. There were many examples that illustrated how grief-stricken they were. They continued to do the best they could to be good parents to us. However, it is clear to me, as a parent myself, that they were paralyzed by the tragic loss of their son. I remember clearly how John openly beat me, punching me in the face, while my mother and father stood by just a metre away. Before the loss of Kerry, this would never, this unimaginable event in our house, 
My parents would never have allowed such behaviour. But there they were, a metre away, allowing this to happen. They lost the ability to parent for a long time. It was, if, it was as if they were, as I say, paralysed leaving them unable to continue their parenting duties. At the time, I didn't know what, it ma what to make of it. But in reflection, I believe their reaction or lack of it was symptomatic of the psychological grief they suffered. But they held on, and perhaps we, their remaining children, were what kept them going. They hung in there and were incredibly strong. My third sibling, Peter Hamill, does not wish for me to talk about how Kerry Hamill's torture and murder and subsequently John Hamill's suicide affected him. I wish to acknowledge Peter at this time and sent him my love. My sister Sue Hamill was 16 years old when Kerry was snatched from his boat by the Khmerish. She was 18 years old when she found out what had happened to She has spoken to me about the subliminal fear she feels she has carried with her, consciously or otherwise, for the last 30 years. I fear a fear that has influenced many of her decisions and life choices. Mr. President, with your leave, I would like to read just one or two lines of something Sue wrote to me. Not only does it describe her feelings, but it also encapsulates my suffering. After shock, disbelief, and anger, there came the realization that I could not do anything to bring back Kerry. He is gone forever. What then? I began to wonder how could one human do something unbelievably abhorrent to another human and to an innocent Something had to fill the void where there had once been hope and expectation of his return. What filled that hole was my choice, but I did not consciously choose fear. Often it has only been in retrospect that I have understood why I deferred plans sometimes indefinitely. But slowly I come, but slowly I have come to understand that deep hurt can cause a subtle kind of paralysis. Time is a very, very slow healer. Mr. President, I have already mentioned the suffering and the pain my mother, father, brothers and sister were part of my own suffering. The distressing aspect of Kerry's death and the nature, and more importantly, the nature in which his life was taken. Ultimately, I do not know how Kerry finally met his father. At best, my brother was blindfolded, taken out to the S21 compound, to a pre-dug trench, made to kneel down beside it, hit over the head with a metal bar, his throat slipped, then buried. That was the best case scenario. Unfortunately, Kerry was regarded as a special prisoner. The type of prisoner the Doik Division was set up to look after. It indicates that these prisoners received special attention. The thought of which makes my stomach turn. It is also possible that Kerry, still alive, could have been made to sit in the middle of car tyres, covered in petrol, 
When I think about what happened to my brother Kerry Hammer, I get the sense of hopelessness, powerlessness, and despair. He must have felt while incarcerated and tortured at S21. He must have suffered terribly, yet he had no one to appeal to. He had no one prepared to listen to his pain and anguish. There was no way out and no vindication. When I tried to imagine my brother, Kerry, how he would have responded in that environment, it makes me feel sick. I know Kerry was physically and mentally strong. He would not have succumbed easily. His will to live would have been evident. Mr. President, I would like your leave to show one last photo. The photo that I imagine illustrates what Kerry suffered. <laughs> I know this individual may not be my brother Kerry, just another poor soul at his 21. But the way he is shackled, the way he has been grotesquely beaten, the blood flowing from his gaping wounds, yet the continuing struggle, the resilience, this man struggled to hold on to life. He is moving holding himself up ever so slightly off the floor. For me, Mr. President, this is my gorgeous, this is my gorgeous, beautiful brother, Kerry Hammond, that is 21. This is the sort of image that has haunted me. When I was 16, it still haunts me today. I have lost so much sleep over this image. I don't know what The time frame Kerry was detained at S21 also continues to trouble me. From what I have been led to believe, the longer a prisoner remains in S21, the worse the torture gets. It has also been my understanding that once prisoners signed confessions and put their thumbprint to them, that they were then executed. Whereas John Dewhurst was detained for three weeks, my brother endured a much longer stay in the compound. His last dated confession was in 13th of October 1978, two months to the day of his capture. When I think about the deprivation, the degradation, and the abuse that Kerry would have suffered, after 30 years, my tears are still copious. And I try not to think too deeply about what he went through. <coughs> I think Kerry would have been very, very angry. Angry to the point of outrage. 
then I think there must have been stages where he would have felt that it was useless to resist. That sense of powerlessness and hopelessness must have been incredibly difficult. I have wondered how Kerry felt in those days in prison. Deprived of food and water, dehumanised beyond belief and torture. Last year's Republican nominee for the presidential elections for the United States, John McCain, talked about his incarceration during a Viet in a Vietnamese prison. He described how he lost the will to live and attempted to commit suicide on more than one occasion. I've wondered if Kerry tried to do the same. As much as it hurts to say, I believe at some point in his incarceration, my brother may have lost all hope and contemplated suicide as a welcome relief. During the 16-month period, Kerry was missing. I, at 14 and then 15 years of age, took solace in alcohol, boozing it up in the pub or out somewhere with my friends. I was 16 years old when the news of Kerry's fate arrived. In that year that followed, my nights out, binging, escalated in regularity and duration. I would often end up violently ill, sometimes on the carpet of my bedroom after returning home late at night. I would often go to school with a hangover, and my education accordingly suffered. My parents were dealing with their own grief in their own way, and through no fault of their own, either didn't notice my antics or felt powerless to do anything about it. When I was actually at home, sorry, before losing Kerry and John, we were an outgoing family, but afterwards, Mum, Dad, cut off many of their social contacts. As children, we stopped meeting other children and families. Our immediate family became a little bubble, and we became very reluctant to interact with others. Mr. President, I believe that a family is not necessarily limited to just blood relatives or family by marriage. They are often family by circumstance. There are two people who I consider to be family in this way. And I ask for your leave, Mr. President, to allow me to very briefly, very briefly refer to them. The first is Hilary Holland, who is the sister of John Dewhurst. I contacted her three years ago and have since visited her in England. In the interim time, we have formed a strong bond in our shared grief such as Hillary's grief that she cannot today say her brother's name out loud. She cannot say her brother's name out loud. In our correspondence, Hillary described her pain, and as I feel it, this also captures my own feelings. I would like to read you just five sentences of what she has written. Via email. 
When I first heard of my brother's death, and for a long time, I felt that if it was possible to die as a result of emotional pain, then I would. I could not see how my heart could continue to pump and my lungs to breathe. The physical pain was so intense. And and that for me, it is all to do with how they were killed. Torture. 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 I believe it's dehumanizing. Both for the person who suffers that torture and for the person perpetrating it. For the person perpetrating it. The second person I would like to briefly talk about is Gail Colley, Mr. President. The love of my brother Kerry Hamill's life. The two of them had plans to marry and have children. Even now I cannot look at the beautiful photo I have of Gail. The two of them together without feeling deprived of such a wonderful sister-in-law and their planned children. When Gail finally received the news of Kerry's demise, she too was devastated. Gail did not get married and she did not have children. Mr. President, to conclude. Mr. President, to conclude, all the pain and suffering my family, Gail, Hillary and myself, have had to endure was created by one man, by the system of degradation, humiliation and torture he created from the death camp he ran. All this heartbreak, sorrow and human suffering was stemmed from the destruction of the life of my beautiful brother. That was just one life. There are between 13,000 and 20,000 such stories like ours, all stemming from the systems, systems and practices and actions that Dirk administered at S21. At a personal level, this whole process has been demanding. I have had to dig up all the memories and try to put them in perspective. I have had to sit down and write about what you did to good people and the pain that you caused. When the need and desire arises, I can be incredibly focused. I'm tough and determined, and yet I sit before this court, frail and emotional. I should feel ashamed from behaving so well, but I do not. The only person in this court who should feel ashamed is that man. Doik at Symes. At times I've wanted to smash you. To use your words. In the same way that you smashed so many others. At times I've imagined you shackled, starved, whipped and clubbed viciously. Viciously. I have imagined your scrotum electrified, being forced to eat your own feces, being nearly drowned and having your throat cut. I have wanted that to be your experience, your reality. I have wanted you to suffer. 
ដោយជាអ្នកទទួលគាត់ត្រូវលោកត្រូវតែរកនៅអ្វីដែលបានធ្វើលោកត្រូវតែរកនៅអ្វីដែលបានធ្វើលោកត្រូវតែរកនៅ
Mr. President, chào chào anh quý thân bán hay chăm dừng tăng sầm núa sầm lục đọc chó có đoàn tài lục ai uh, tròn trầm sắp đập nữ sầm núa phong đại tử kênh sầm núa đại dương nâng uh, bình chung sầm núa nụ từ ôi lúc về khắc cư dương có đoàn tài ôi lục sắp đập hay nâng dương ôi lục sắp lời từ nâng sầm núa đại tăng đời đầm mình đang rót vào bên này luôn đi, tại vì nó đời xa dương mình chẳng may bị gì mà đòn thiết nơi sầm nuối luôn, nó tệ vì vừa nơi tì ní chết khné, vấn đề chi viện nông ca đời có tăng sầm nuối to, mà đây thà su sầm su từ chuẩn tập cháu tam đại dạ, ông và thiên ông nhầm rẽ, thiên ông nhầm rẽ nừng, ơi chuẩn tập cháu sẽ lời tên nông sầm nuối là bao lâu, lâu nhiêu đi? Yeah, no, just because, again, it was my yeah, opinion, yeah, not so my client's. Yeah, Actually, um, what my client intended to do is to uh, say something uh, very shortly uh, to the accused, uh, that is one, uh, and uh, then uh, he would uh, have six uh, questions. Uh, then, uh, of course, he can, he can tell you what uh, he is in, uh, intends uh, to say uh, for, uh, for the bench uh, to repeat uh, it, but that uh, the confusion, uh, again, it's my opinion. He has one very, very short, very short statement for the accused, and then he has six questions. I apologize for that. Ông nhập đại năng anh nhát, vận tải ông nhập đại tôm lực, lục Robert Hamil tha lục cọ bay prapra nơi sầm đầy anh nà thay thanh nô, nước nông ông sầm lá cá chia viên cà prà sầm đầy thun thun, đại miền lạc nạn phòng man, chấm pù bọc cồn nà cả đói nơi tỉ nị, viên prà sầm đầy nước nông lạc khăn và chạy cả tê chạy bập. Hãy bật cộp đời xa là thỏa, nâng cô nở thỏa, đầm bấy đầm nà ca rương khá đầy. Tì ní, mình mên chìa tì cả lại anh đài là chân nền nít khá nền tì, cứ chìa cả lại anh chạy chạy, quẹt nhạy và chạy cả tì. Chắc bập, phá lời chắc bập đầm bấy đọc khó rụt trừ. Ông nhầm rèn sự khâm thả lúc nâng dũ lập bánh hà ní hơi, bà 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 nở bị bích ở bà lúc, ai bàn là ơ xóm rùm nâng bà cộp đời cô nở thỏa. Chúng tôi ông nhóm đây anh ấy nhạt và thân bờ lục miền bầm nong này gì từ căn chuẩn chập chào nô. Thank you, Mr. President. Some of our colleagues, my apologies for any miscommunication. Do you acknowledge you for pleading guilty? I am angry beyond words with you and what you've done, but I acknowledge and respect your guilty plea. Your acknowledgement is a small but significant contribution to addressing the harm that you caused. Those that have not pleaded guilty and do not accept the harm they have caused are doubly worth of their hate and ridicule. The questions I ask Sorry, you have proven to this court that you are very good, that you have a very good memory. Over a three-year period, there were less than 10 Westerners at S21. And it appears that there were never more than two held there at any one time. I ask you to please answer these questions truthfully. My first question follows. Mr. President, question from Dirk, what do you remember of my brother? Thank you. ជាតិចោតអាចឆ្លើយបានទីនៅសំណួរថាដើមមិនដឹងរាប់រាយនៅរូបនេះចង់ដឹងថាតើលោកបានចងចាំអ្វីខ្លះអំពីបងរបស់
mau pi lơ mà lơ pi nè chmua để làm nơi trong chấm chmua muốn không thích ở hơi không nơi trong chấm để chmua tu chmua phóc xi lát đi đời xa ấy đời xa đệ nhóm trời mật bốn hai từ mười một chân chết ông kli giúp bị chân ông kli mình nhé một chân davis cầm mình ăn trời phong cái thảo ơi bọn đẹp xá nào đối thoải mái bọn ai từ mười mà phải từ nhóm của từ nhẹ bỏ trái chung một khăn quan tròn cồn kì nhẹ miền bùn bồ đài cái trẻ ông kli toát chân nhẹ nhưng cầm từ xuống khơi kì bỏ trái toát chân nhẹ mềm được chứ này không thể chụp mốc tay chân chết ông khỉnh tê không ọt bàn chụp mốc ám mìl tê ai dâm này ai cơ xa phía bắn đăng ám mìl đi bình linh lọ chân ai cơ xa nà nà thằng ọt không chưa không còn là sông tục bí bắn đám bây bình chạy chôn rô bè thay nè phía tì mối cư sau này thành khó thả mòm nấy xuôi chùm lại Khe rì Tạm bất nhẹ để xuôi chùm lại Khe rì vì chùm mất bọn Tì bí Biết để Khâm chồng Bình chạy thêm Cư Nơi khăn nông Biết bận đăng rộp bọc rộp bé Thả nhẹ để xâm lập Khe rì cư chùm mô Chiếm sư mềm tê sau anh ta này bạn định đào khi chụp bài hơi, cứ chung bỏ tiền để mọc pin nhẹ lựa cào đi, cứ chọn để hết hay nên carry army đi, bên trên tới công ty từng tuyển nhận tầm đó, hơi công ty hơi sạ sấp đốt ở công ty, đi chơi đường bịch, được chưa này, riêng để trong này trong trăm, ông pi army hay nên đẹp hơn bọn này xôm cổ rụp chùm rụp bé tam rịa lục bật hiền đời cổ rụp xong chừng tỏ xong nùa tí bì đại lục rụp bé nằm miền bầm nòng nông ca xùa tại chùm chập chào tam rịa ông nhìm ra xong chừng mà Thank you, Mr. President. Some of Colonel Pertin. Do I can say John Dewhurst and Kerry Hamel were killed simultaneously? May I ask when this occurred? Thank you, Mr. President. 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 Kari Hamil Ta Ka Sam Lap Nung Bo Phật Tơ Nung Pil Na Lung Chong Cham Da Di Ti Jum Ri Pa Sa Lung Phật Thiên Thang Ngay Khai Pit Pa Pat Khi Nhom Man Aaj Jek Jum Ban Ti Ka Pan Ta Chia Pa Ti Ka Kham Sung Man Jek Tha Khi Nung Kham Nong Pi Nek Ni Tôi sẽ chạy rút ở từng phí được chứ này Tạm Bọn đồng miên Để rộ bè bắt đầu chung ông xã văn hà ca mình nâng Khi rí chạy hơi kói Chọn Được chứ này Khi rí chạy hơi bằng nằm chân chón chân Khi rí dọc tới cầm tích Ní cứ xong bình chạy chung ông bí thằng ngày khai cầm tích bẹp nè Nói cổ rút Thầm Rồi bé Tăng dùm nô và to tiết Thank you Mr. President Xâm ọc cốt lục bật thiên Was there a special branch Dealing with the foreigners And if so What were the procedures Applied to them Ờ Xin chào các bạn đã trở lại những xâm nô nữ bản tí. 
มุกมีสันนิติวิธีระบบมือสันติบาลอันวัดจมพูชนบริติแต่ปฏิบัติอย่างโดยไม่ได้ปัญหาเนี่ยตุลีนะเข้มสมีจูนอัมพีกรณ์ในกันในอาจจะไรไม่เชื่อมปั้งกำหนดเอาซ้อมมาพิมวยจนบอร์ตีเตียงบุญรูปนี่จนบัจจมติเตียงบุญรูปนี่เมาจะปีเลยเลิกนากระดอยทางเลือกกำลังเอาซอมาพิมุ้ยสู้จมลายลุยหายกำติดโดยไว้อ้อยสลับลุยหายลดอ้อยออกกำอ้อยสลับเฉียงนี่เป็นเชี่ยเจ้าแหละหรือบ่อาจจะไตรมอลเลือกซอมาพิมุ้ยอ้อยอ่านวัดแบบนี้ดูชนะกูในจุบายยังไม่จมปวดจนบอร์ตีวิตุเลียปีคำสมบัญชีกาปฏิบัติในสมัยพิมุ้ยตามบัญชีแข่งเลยจูนลอยกรุบปนในรบเบิดสมบัญชีจังสมโนบรรทอติดสัญญาเมียนสมเชย We've heard that Westerners were put in tires and burnt alive. You have said in this trial that this didn't happen. But we believe that it did. You said it did. You said it did not happen because it would not have been against your orders. However, we know of the last of at least one instance of rape at S21, which you have acknowledged, which according to you yourself was against your orders. So my question is, how can you be certain that one or several Westerners were not burnt alive? จุดเด็ดขาดอาจฉลาดหนึ่งสมโนนิบานที่สมเชยหนึ่ง Jumpoh pu, pejam beti, kenyum tain dan iji, mendarkan di, semlap hari, bat benci di kang le, out dot out off, ni kenyum ada iji kopi beti, jam lay robak kenyum, jumpoh muk, jaga kram serb mukit, jepah tang serang. ខ្ញុំសុំនិយាយអរហួសនឹងតិចទៀតទៀតចុះសុំ3តែបទសំភាសរបស់ខ្ញុំជាមួយនឹងឈ្មោះគ្រីស្ទុសពេសូក៏ខ្ញុំនិយាយអញ្ចឹងថ្វីតបតែអេកសារនេះយើងមិនទុកជាផ្លូវការខ្ញុំមិនទៅទួលស្គាល់ជាផ្លូវការក៏ដោយក៏ខ្ញុំនៅតែនិយាយអញ្ចឹងក៏ប៉ុន្តែដល់ក្រោយមកលិចលឿពាក្យថាដុតទំរស់ខ្ញុំតាមដានមើលតើរឿងនេះมันยังไม่เหม็นเต็มเรื่องนี้คือสมรมลึกการดึงดาวในขนมอังสาวนาการในจูนโดยต่อเติมในขนมการดึงดาวอังสาวนาการนี้เบลิกมัดหุยตัวตัวสกอลกลางเงียบบกัดเรื่องขึ้นบานเป็นเจ้าหายกินยีนุ่งดุจบักบกได้ไอ้เจ้าไหนสักให้กรรมบกประคอน Chia sẻ khai cắm mình từ tôi khỏi trời Trời thả bà chân mà tì Mình nhé Trời đột tiếng luôn Bố chìm xưa bà rạp Đôi chân này chia sẻ khai cắm mối đại Mình miên từng ngôn Đâm bây từ bạc để xe sẽ khai cắm rộng bỏ Mất hôi thì Đôi dục chìm xưa mau nơi đừng mục Ông sạp anh à cả đi เชียมซื้อตัวคลุนเขียมโดยนักแต่สงสัยถ้ามันเป็นเจ็บบุกหลักระบบที่สอนพี่หมวยโดนยีจนยีหลังดดเอ่อคนสลับให้รู้รู้ตกสะสมเจ้าเลยเลยเพลย์เล็กมรอยสายสบายมุกเชิดเ
ដូច្នេះហើយបានជាខ្ញុំបានសន្និដ្ឋានជូនអង្គសវនាការថាខ្ញុំមិនទន់ទទួលស្គាល់ថាមានអនាគិហ៊ានល្មើសនិងបត់
ជាកិច្ចបន្តអស់ញ៉ាំពេះគលវិទ្យាការទៅមេត្តាវីដល់ម្ដងរាប់នៃក្រុមមួយដើម្បីមានឱកាសក្នុងការសួរដល់ដើ
de souffrance, de tristesse et de colère aussi. Nous n'avons pas de questions précises à poser à M. Robert Hamill, mais si vous nous en donnez l'autorisation, j'aurai une seule question qui a trait à ce témoignage à poser à l'accusé. Je vous remercie. ជាប់ពាក់ព័ន្ធដែលនឹងសេចក្តីថ្លែងការហើយខ្ញុំសួរទៅកាន់ជនជាប់ចោទ <coughs> មេធាវីការពីក្តីតើមានសំណួរអ្វីត្រូវសួរដល់ដើមមិនដឹងរត់បវិនីរូបនេះ <coughs> ដល់ឱកាសដល់ជាតិប្រចោតដើម្បីធ្វើការកត់ទំគល់នៅសក្តីថ្លែងការរបស់ដើមមិនដឹងរត់បានីរ៉ូបឺតហាមីលដែលប
để khi ông chân mộc mộc tầng hai khuôn xong từ tua cài chấm nôm chấm đẹp phía ông chấm nôm chấm đẹp nick có đôi sọc đôi sọc đôi chui chậm nâng cầm hộp bọc khuôn nick cứ như đời tạm bất ắt miền cài cả lay thắng vô biết mà đọc xa đâm bay bộ bạch say cứ ắt miền thế nick cứ chỉ sốt chặt để khi ông sùng lòng ông chụp bức chết bị chỉ chân cầm bị chỉ từng mũi mọi đặc luôn chỉ một mức tổ lạc cá đi phần này xung cổ rụng phần chọc phần này đông đà cả sạm đà cả thằng này đi khỉnh thà đo mong từ sầm rạ nơi phê rơ xìl hơi hơi đông đà cả sẽ đập đi thằng này cả đâu bỏ đang đang đi rụp bớt hàm miếng có chọc hay đấy, tôi chỉ này ông dùng đây, bậc cả, à đầm lá cả, sạm lá cá, sầm rập ngày này trầm đi, hơi sạm lá cá, lược từ quần tỏ nơi ngày sai, chập bì mong trầm buồn bực từ hay lục robert hàm miếng đời xa ni tệ vị thi này cả đập sẽ đẩy thành cả robert lục bàn chấp sập cục hơi, tôi chỉ này sự bảo lục ai còn to nông ca chiều rùm đồng nai ca sạm nai ca to từ tiệt cổ bán rồi còn lục anh chơi từ ti cả lại na đại lục miền bầm nòng từ cổ bán nửa ngày sáng rồi còn sạp bạt bạt to bạt to anh nói rằng một tí không kháng ở nòm chuẩn tập cháu từ căn một tí không kháng vĩnh hay ở nòm chuẩn tập cháu một căn sạp sạm nai ca nếu bất ngay sẽ ai bàn môn mong bàn môn bực Xong trên cao trường